Welcome, everyone. Good boy, Tucker. This is learning at its most fun. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Red Tail Essentials Permissions. Today, we're going to be talking about what permissions are, who can set permissions in Redtail CRM, where do permissions apply within the CRM, and lastly, how can I report on permissions inside Redtail CRM? So let's start with that first question. What is a permission? A permission gives permission to certain users or teams in Redtail about accessing certain contacts, notes, activities, or opportunities. Essentially, why you use opportunities is it gives you the ability to restrict access to designated contact records to certain database users or certain database user teams. This is most common when you work in maybe a larger office or maybe have multiple advisors managing separate books of business using the same CRM. We want a way to be able to distinguish between the two. And what we want to do is we, we don't want to give access to users in the database that really don't need that access. And so what we do is we set a permission in Redtail that, again, is going to specify who has access to see that contact, that note, that activity, or that opportunity. And so next up is who can set these permissions? Well, there are two levels of user access that are allowed to set permissions in Redtail. One is the database owner, and two is the database admin. Now, these two levels of user access have the ability to set permissions in Redtail. Now, the difference between the two is that a database owner is not going to be impacted by any permission settings. Essentially, they have access to everything regarding every contact within your database, regardless if you set the permission or not. The reason we do this is, is twofold. Uh, first off, that database owner is technically the owner of that data for legal reasons. So it would make sense to restrict their access to being able to see data that, well, frankly, belongs to them. The other reason we do allow the database owner to have full access to all contact note activity and opportunity data is it allows for you to be able to revert any inadvertent actions when setting permissions. For example, if I were to set a permission accidentally, I can then go to the database owner or use the database owner login to go in and revert that permission. It's not going to restrict me from being able to make changes to an accident. And so if you're curious on who that database owner is in your database, well, it's most likely the person that started the Redtail subscription. Uh, when you began your free trial, maybe years ago, uh, whoever you set up that trial under is typically going to be your database owner. Now that database owner can of course change over time. And so if you're really needing to know who is that database owner, who is that login that has full unrestricted access to all contact data in Redtail, the place to go is going to be in your name in the top right-hand corner. Choose the manager account section. And under that manager account section, you're going to come to the manage database users and teams. So again, that was my name, manager account, and manage database users and teams. Here we'll be directed to seeing all of the database users. The one with the green tag titled database owner is going to be the login, again, that's going to have unrestricted data to all data in Redtail. Now these blue admin icons here over the right-hand side, that is going to indicate who are the database admins. These are the people who have the ability to set those permissions. Another important thing that you're going to want to maybe use when setting up permissions is your teams as well. So I mentioned before that we can set up permissions to a database user, an individual, or what we can do is we can also permission to a team. And so one of your first steps is if you're going to be using permissions, 
is to set up your database teams because that's going to make it a lot easier to set your permissions for contacts, notes, activities, and opportunities in bulk rather than having to apply a permission for each individual person. Okay, great. So now let's actually get into the action now. We are going to show you how to actually set up those permissions. So first thing we're gonna do is open up a contact and set a contact permission. So to do that, I'm gonna come up to the search option right here and I'm gonna type in the contact for John. We're gonna be using one of my favorite people, John Muir, and we're going to set up a permission for John's contact record. To do that, we're gonna navigate over to the left-hand side menu, and we're gonna choose this more option to expand our options for this contact. Now, as we scroll down the page, we notice that there is an option here for permissions and roles. This is where you can go to set a contact permission. And so I'll choose permissions and roles here on the left-hand menu. And in the middle of my screen, I can see the contact permissions. Now, right now, Red Tail's letting me know that there are no permissions assigned. That means that everyone has access to this contact. And that is the default in Red Tail. If all contacts will be available to all users unless explicitly stated otherwise or given a permission. And so if perhaps I'm sharing this book of business with some of my fellow advisors and we're using the same CRM system and you know, I really don't want John Muir showing up on their reports or maybe in their searches or I, I just really don't want to give them access to seeing this contact. What I'm going to do is I'm going to set a permission by clicking on this add button here on the right hand side. And then I'm given the option to choose between two permission types. One is a user and the other is team. So if I wanted to give this contact permission just to myself, I would choose user and then choose my name from the dropdown. What this does is it's going to give only access to me to be able to see this contact. Now, if I wanted to, I can add in an additional user as well. I'll choose type and I can choose an additional user. Let's choose Jack, add permission. Now both Tucker and Jack have access to see this contact. Now, what if I wanted to add a whole group of users to be able to see this contact? Well, in that case, I would want to assign to a team. So I'll head to the team option here, and now I can select the team of Tucker's team. And that means that Tucker plus any members of Tucker's team now we'll have access to see this contact. So now we have three permissions set. We have Tucker, we have Jack, and we have Tucker's team. This means that only when you're logged in as Tucker, Jack, or a member of Tucker's team, will you be able to access John's contact. For everybody else, it will be as if it didn't even exist. And so let's go ahead and close this now. And we have our permissions set. And so now if we navigate away, we should still be able to access that contact. Again, I'm logged in as Tucker right now, so I have access to seeing this contact. Now let's pretend for a second that I wasn't Tucker, or I wasn't Jack, or maybe I wasn't a member of Tucker's team. Would I still be able to access John Muir's contact? Well, let's test it out. I'm going to slide over here. So now I'm logged in as Bill, and Bill was not Tucker. He's not Jack, and he wasn't a member of Tucker's team. And so now if I go up to this search contacts option here, and I try to find the contact John Muir, notice that I'm not getting any results. That's because Bill does not have permission to see John's contact. He was not labeled as one of the available permissions. And so that's how we can restrict access for certain users from visiting certain contacts in Redtail. Now, you might be thinking, well, Austin, that's all great and dandy, but I have 200 contacts. I have 500 contacts. I have over 1,000 contacts. It would take me far too long to set all those permissions for each individual contact. Well, the good news is, is you can set up your permissions in bulk. In fact, let me show you how to do that. 
To set your permissions in bulk, you're going to want to head to this contacts option here on the left-hand side. Now, I think it's best to use the advanced search tool in this instance to narrow down my results to maybe just Tucker's clients. And so that way we can set the permissions accordingly. So I'm going to click on this advanced search button here across the top. And using the advanced search tool in Redtail, I'm going to search for the contacts that belong to Tucker. To do that, I'm going to choose the type is contact. The field is going to be servicing advisor. The operand will be equal to. And the value, of course, will be Tucker. So now if I run this list, Redtail is going to search through all of my contacts, and it's going to find me the 183 records that belong specifically to Tucker. And so now if I wanted to permission all of these contacts just to Tucker and his team, I'd go ahead and choose all the records by clicking on this top checkbox here. Choose the option to select all 183 contacts. And then I'm going to go to the right-hand side menu and choose contact options, bulk actions. And under my bulk actions menu, there is an option here to add permissions. Permissions add it should be right in the middle of your bulk actions menu. Keep in mind, if you are not a database admin, this option will not be available to you. So if you don't see this as an option, it's most likely that you are not a database admin or the database owner. In this case, I happen to be the database owner and the database admin. So I have the ability to add the permissions. So I'll click permissions add. And now, just like I did before, I can go ahead and select my type. So if I want to do an individual user, I can do user. Or let's make it easier on ourselves. Let's use that team option and assign these contacts to Tucker's team. You also have the option here to replace any existing permissions as well. So if you had already maybe added some permissions in your database prior, you can replace them all by clicking on this top checkbox. And so now I'll go ahead and hit this add permissions button here. And that is going to assign a permission to all 183 contacts here and only give accessibility to Tucker and Tucker's team. So that is how you set up your permissions in bulk. Now, at this point, you're probably thinking, well, Austin, that's great. I can set up individually, I can set them in bulk, but what if I don't wanna set the permission? What if I want that to just happen automatically? Well, we have that option. To set up an automation, to automatically set a permission in Redtail, you can head up to your name in the top right-hand corner, choose Manage Your Account. And under the Manage Your Account section, there is a section here called Automation Templates. Under the Automations tab here, you're going to click the Add button here. And we're going to set an automation today for when a contact is added, it's going to automatically permission to an appropriate team. So here, I'll go ahead and type it out, the description here. I'll say that when a new Tucker contact is added to Redtail, permission contact to Tucker's team, okay? And so to make this happen, first we're gonna choose the trigger event. The trigger event is going to be when the contact is added to Redtail. And so for my trigger event menu here, I'm gonna choose contact added. I'll also wanna make sure that I give this automation a name. The next thing I'll do is I'll click on the do this action option here. And I can create an action that's going to follow. In this case, I want the action to be set permissions. And I want to set the permission to the team of Tucker's team. 
So to recap here, we have when a contact is added to Redtail, the action that will follow is it will set a permission to the team of Tucker's team. Now, of course, we're going to want to give this automation some conditions or some parameters, right? Because right now, what we're telling Redtail is if we add any contact to Redtail, it's going to automatically set the permission to Tucker's team. Now, that might upset some of the other users in our database. And so what we want to do is we want to give it a condition. I'm going to click on if all conditions true. And I'm going to specify with the condition by clicking new condition here that I only want this automation to trigger when the contact servicing advisor is equal to Tucker. So now my automation is a little bit more precise. Now it's when a contact is added and the servicing advisor is equal to Tucker, the automation that will follow will be setting the permission to Tucker's team. What that does is it allows you to not have to worry about continually adding permissions in for new contacts. Redtail will go ahead and take care of that for you. All you'll need to do is just make sure you fill out that servicing advisor when you're adding the contact. So that way, Redtail knows which team to assign that to. So automations can be a wonderful way to make sure that all of your contacts stay permissioned. Another wonderful way to make sure that your contacts stay permissioned is to use the permission reports. And so let's go ahead and take a look at those permission reports today. I'm going to head over to the reports tab here on the left-hand side. And if you are logged in under the database owner login, you will have the ability to access permission reports, permission reports. What these do is they give you reports on which contacts are permissioned to which teams or users. For example, I can use the contact permissions report here, and I can see which contacts are permissioned to which teams. Additionally, if I wanted to just focus on some of the contacts that were not permissioned, I can also use the permission report for contacts not permissioned. And that's going to show me any contacts where there hasn't been a permission set yet. So in this case, I have about 503 records of contacts that do not have a permission set. And so if I wanted to set those permissions, what I'd likely do is hit this search option here in the top right-hand corner. which will take me to a page very similar to the page that we looked at when we used advanced search. And from here, now I can go ahead and check off some of these contacts here. And once again, I'll use my contact options, bulk actions, and permissions add to get permissions added to those contacts. Once those permissions are added, they'll be automatically removed from those contact not permission report because they are in fact now permissioned. So again, these reports here will help you to keep tabs on all the contacts in your database and make sure that they have the appropriate permissions assigned to them. Now we're gonna move away from contact permissions in Redtail and we're gonna talk about other permissions that also exist in Redtail. The three that also exist in addition to contact permissions are note permissions, activity permissions, and opportunity permissions. So let's start at the top of the list. Let's begin with note permissions. For that, I'm going to head back to a contact record. Let's use today, um, well, let's keep using John. So here's John again, one more time. And what we're going to do is when we're adding a note into Redtail, we have the ability here to set a permission type to that note. An example of when you might want to use this is when you have maybe some sensitive notes, maybe something that you know maybe isn't best shared amongst my team. For example here, let's say that John 
has a terminal illness and has three months to live. Okay, again, very sad news here. We also have some, some advisors and some admin that are friends with John. And so, you know, that was really just some information that John shared just for my ears only to know. And so if I wanted to keep this information private to maybe myself or maybe just um, a certain team in my database, I would wanna go to the permissions type here and set a permission to type to either the user of myself or to my team. And so that way, again, only myself or members of my team have access to seeing this note. Now, keep in mind that the contact permission is going to override the note permission, right? Because the note lives within the contact. So for example, if we go back to Bill here, oops, let's extend here. If we go back to Bill, remember that Bill doesn't have any access to see John's contact at all, let alone the note there within. So really in this instance, what we would wanna set a note permission for is for permissioning just this note for the users that already have access to John's record. So for example here, maybe Tucker doesn't want to let his whole team know about John's terminal illness. Maybe he just wants to set that for himself. That means that only Tucker will have the ability to see this note in Redtail. If you're curious to know if a note is permissioned or not, you can tell by seeing this locked icon here on the note. What this does is it indicates that there is in fact a permission set for that note. Notice these notes here are unlocked meaning any person that has access to see John's record will have access to see this note. However, with the lock notes, only those who are specified will be able to see and access that note. Awesome. The next permission type in Redtail is going to be our activity permissions. So an activity permission allows for you to put an item on your calendar without necessarily sharing it with your whole team. So for example here, if I'm in my Redtail calendar and tomorrow I have a colonoscopy appointment and I'd rather not let my entire staff know that I'm gonna be getting a colonoscopy, so what I'm gonna do is I can still block off that time on my calendar. So let's say my appointment is tomorrow at one o'clock and I wanna put that on my calendar so that way my team will know that I'm gonna be out of the office. I can set my subject here for colon appointment. And when I choose this create edit option here, I have the option to set a privacy option or a permission for who gets access to seeing this, this activity. So for example, if this is just for my eyes only, I can set it for just me. I also have the option to set this for only the attendees. What that means is that only the people under the attendee section here will be access, able to see the activity details. So for example, let's say that, uh, Jack was coming with me to drive me to my colonoscopy appointment. I'd probably want Jack to be able to know what we're doing and where we're going, but I don't want the rest of the team to know. So I would set it for only these attendees. Or of course, I also have the option to do just like I did with contacts and notes, set it to a particular team. In this case, I'll choose Tucker's team. In this case, I'm gonna set this activity to just myself because I'm the only one that really needs to know about this colon appointment. And so I'll go ahead and save this as an activity on my calendar. So now when I'm logged in here as Tucker and I look at my calendar for tomorrow, all the categories are showing, there it is. There's my colon appointment for one o'clock tomorrow. And of course we can see that is in fact a colon appointment. Now, what if I was, a different user. What if I was Bill? 
if I go to the calendar and Bill's login here, and let's say that I wanted to pull up and, and maybe take a look at Tucker's calendar for tomorrow. Maybe I got to set up a meeting with Tucker. And so I'm going to choose Tucker's calendar here. Notice that when I'm logged in as Bill, we still have, let me zoom in a little bit for you. You can see this a little bit easier. Notice that the time is still blocked off on Tucker's calendar from one to two o'clock. However, it is labeled as private activity rather than colon appointment. In fact, if Bill tries to click into this private activity here, it's gonna kick him out and say, you do not have permission to view this activity. So again, what these activity permissions are great for is being able to block off a time on your calendar, but not exactly specify what it is that you're doing during that time to the rest of your team. Another example might be if you were having like a, a disciplinary meeting with maybe one of your employees, you might want to put that onto your calendar, but maybe not broadcast to the world exactly what it is that you'll be doing during that time. So again, the activity permission isn't going to necessarily hide the activity. It's just going to keep it labeled as private activity. So that way, the person that is not permission to that activity doesn't have access to see the details going on within that activity. All right, one more level of permissions for you, and that's going to be found under our Opportunities tab here on the left-hand side. So Opportunities are most commonly known as the sales pipeline of the CRM. It's typically where we go to add in instances where we have opportunities to either expand with new business or grow existing business. And so if you have maybe multiple advisors or maybe multiple sales professionals working within your database and, you know, for whatever reason, we don't want maybe advisor A to steal from advisor B as far as their leads go, or maybe have advisor B peeking in on advisor A's opportunities to see if there might be one there to, to take from him. Uh, if we want to keep those separate, what we're going to do is we're going to set an opportunities permission. So for example, here, I'm going to click new opportunity here. And we can go ahead and set up a opportunity. Uh, in this case, let's do a um, let's do a opportunity here for Mr. John Muir. He's going to look into some long-term care insurance. Okay, and so John is ill in and is in need of long-term care insurance. Let's review his options, okay? So this is gonna be labeled most likely as existing business since John is already a client of mine. But down here at the bottom, I have the ability to set a permission type. Again, what this is gonna do is it's gonna control who has access to being able to see this opportunity. So for example, if I only wanted to set this to the team equal to Tucker, now only Tucker and the members of Tucker's team will be able to see this opportunity here for Mr. John Muir. If I head over into Bill's login and I head over to that opportunity section, we're not gonna be able to see that opportunity for John and his long-term care insurance. Why? Because Bill does not have permission to see that opportunity. So again, we can keep our opportunities private and separate by just adding in some permissions here. If we did, in fact, maybe want to give Bill permission after the fact, we can always click this Add button here to add in an additional permission to add Bill to this opportunity. So now, because I specified in the permissions, Bill will have access to seeing this opportunity. OK, folks, well, that just about wraps up our permissions. Again, thank you everybody for your time and we have a wonderful rest of your day. Thanks so much for joining us today for this particular session. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to give us a call at 800-206-5030, option three for support, or just shoot us an email over to support at redtailtechnology.com. Thanks a lot and have a great day.